Hi everybody, Gerdy here. Welcome to my training and I apologize for the glare in my glasses, but if I don't put my glasses on or when I take them off, I won't be able to read as good as I would like. So my name is Gerdy Verboert. I'll be conducting a short training on the importance of uh, your vision, your life vision, your vision for life and business. And first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. I am Dutch. I, lived in I live in Austria. I lived in the Netherlands for most of my life and moved to Austria after 20 plus years in consultancy and project, project management. And that was a life that I didn't really like. So when my body told me that it was time to take a hard look at what I was doing and how I was living my life, I eventually decided that I wanted to live the second half of my life doing something that I actually like, that I love doing, which is when I found a home in the mountains of Austria. Now, it's not so much Austria, it's much more the mountains, but where I live is truly beautiful. If you've ever seen the musical, The Sound of Music, you know how beautiful it is around here. Now I'm going to share my screen with you because I've created a couple of slides for this, for this training. And um, if you want to comment, please go to streamyard slash facebook.com and enter your name so that I can actually see the comments that you are um, putting in the comment section. So here we go. Um, I think it's this one. Yes. Now, let me see if I can do it in such a way that ah, you can still see me. Very good. The importance of your vision for life and your business. Now, I would like you to imagine that you've been walking for a very long time. You've been very focused on the path that you've taken. You've been going at a pretty good pace, looking down, not looking very much at whatever is going on around you. And after a long time of walking, you suddenly find yourself at a fork in the trail and you have no idea where that fork came from. You, you looked at the map when you started out, but you don't remember there being a fork in the trail. And certainly not at a point that looks anything like where you're standing now. So you look around you, you look at the map that you have with you and to your consternation, you don't really see anything on that map that looks anything that like the surroundings that you're in or vice versa. And slowly you come to the conclusion that even though you'd be moving very fast and making and covering a lot of distance, you're lost. You don't even know for certain whether or not you're still on the map. Now imagine a different scenario. Again, you've been walking for a very long time. You've been very focused. You've been going on at a good pace, but Every now and again, whenever you came to something that you could consider a milestone, some, some, something that was um, that would for certain be on the map, you check the map whether or not you were still on the right path. You always kept an eye on the map. You always checked whether or not you were still going in the right direction. Now, I'm a mountain hiking guide and a, and a coach, and I like to use the metaphor of mountain hiking when I'm talking about vision. So when we're talking about hiking here and going in a certain direction, let's assume that you are going towards a certain mountain summit. You keep checking whether or not you're still going towards that mountain summit, even when you have to take a diversion because you know where you are on the map, and because what you see on the map matches what you see in the terrain around you, in the surroundings that you are in, you can always get back on track. 
So eventually, after a long time, you feel you should be getting closer now. You should be getting to the summit that you are aiming for. By now, your legs may hurt. You may have started cursing yourself for that, having that stupid idea to go to this mountain summit in the first place, for not listening to people who kept telling you, this is an impossible dream. This is not something that you will achieve. But as you're sort of plodding along and no longer feel perhaps that elation that you had when you set out towards this summit of your dreams, you do notice that it is slowly getting easier to move up that mountain. And where a couple of hours or perhaps a couple of days before, whenever you felt the ground leveling off and you hoped that when you came over the rise, you would see that you had reached the summit. And again and again, you would see another rise behind that. Now you have this feeling, I'm getting there, I'm getting close. And as you take those final steps and your head comes over the rise, you see that you've actually reached the summit. And that's what you, that's what you did it for. That's when elation sets in, that's when jubilation sets in. And personally, when I reach the summit, I always yodel. I'm a horrible yodeler, by the way, but I do let out some screams of joy. So you're stepping onto the summit and you think back to all those people who told you this is not possible, you have an impossible dream, but here you are, you're standing on the summit with a bit of luck, the weather is gorgeous, you have blue skies, you can see forever, there's a nice temperature and when you stand there and take it all in and take in all those mountain summits around you, you realize that now that you've reached this summit, now that you've done this, this thing that other people told you was virtually impossible, now that you see those other mountains around you that you know now are within your grasp, within your reach as well, because once you, now that you've conquered this mountain now that you never now excuse me now that you've reached this summit those other summits are reachable too so the vision that you have for your life for your business or for both just became that much bigger hang on now i like to compare having a vision to having chosen a mountain summit that you want to reach. When you choose that mountain summit, when you're standing in the valley and you choose that mountain summit, you probably are not able to see it. You may have seen a painting of it or you've seen a poster at a travel agency. You may have seen something online. Something about that mountain summit grabs your imagination and you are determined to get up there. You have imagined what it will look like. You know in detail what you will, how it will feel to get there, how the views will be endless and breathtakingly beautiful, how an eagle will soar when you reach that summit and just at the moment that you step foot on it will cry out, how the wind will sound, how the air will be fresh and crisp and fill your lungs how your nose will fill with the smell of wet earth. And if you've ever been in the mountains, there's a particular, or at least in Austria, there's a particular smell that comes with that. And you sit down on a rock after you've just felt elated. And now you're sitting down on a rock and you're slowly letting sink in the achieve, your achievement and what you're seeing around you and all those other summits that will now become your next goal, your next vision, or an even greater vision, an expansion of the vision that you already had. So you're celebrating this accomplishment and your vision, your own vision for your life or your business is like that mountain summit. You can hear, feel, smell, taste, um, and see, that's exactly in the greatest detail what your 
vision looks like, what it will be like when you realize that vision, even when you can't see it in the immediate, in the immediate future, even when it seems from where you are now to be almost impossible to realize. Now the word vision means something seen in the imagination and it comes from the Latin word visionem, which means um, the act of seeing. In other words, your vision for your life, for your business or for both of those things is what you imagine your life, your business or both to look like to look like in the greatest detail possible. So your vision is your why. Why are you here? Why are you doing what it is that you do? And why do you do, why does your business exist? Now in that first scenario I took you, to, took you through, that's this scenario when you don't have a vision. When you don't have a vision, you are moving without direction. You may be heading somewhere, but, but you don't know where that somewhere is. You may be moving in a particular direction, but you're doing it without knowing where you're going to end up. So if you instead have a clear vision, you can also map out uh, where from the route from where you are now to where you want to be, to where you are going. And to be able to do so, you have to know where you are now. You have to know what your capabilities are, what your knowledge is, what extra capabilities or extra knowledge you have to acquire, what experience you have and have to acquire to be able to get from where you are now to get to where you want to go. It's like when you've never climbed a mountain before, hiked up a mountain before, you really never, you have no experience, you don't then immediately set yourself the goal of climbing Mount Everest. There are a couple of goals in between before you can get to that one. And that's where you gain knowledge, experience, and all the other things that you may need to actually climb Mount Everest. Now, to realize your vision, uh, let me see if I go in the right direction. Oh, there we go. To realize your vision is like going on an adventure. And an adventure is really nothing other than going out, um, setting out onto something that has an uncertain outcome, but you are willing to learn and you have this clear vision of a outcome that is enticing, that excites you, and that you definitely want to go for. So what you'll do is to make the chances of success as great as possible. Like I said, you make sure that you acquire all the knowledge, the skills, and the experience that you need to be able to get to where you want to go, whether that's a mountain summit or your vision. You look at the map and decide what it is that you need to do. Um, you ask people who have more experience if they want to help you, if they want to train you, if they want to mentor you. And so even though you might not be able to see yet how it is that you will eventually get there, you step out onto that path and start moving in the right direction. And the clearer your vision is, the more more it will inspire you, the more you will be motivated to keep on going. So what are the characteristics of a vision? Some core characteristics of a vision. A vision is grounded in or based or has a basis in your core values and your core, those are the three to five values that are most important to you. Um, that make you, you, that makes your business you. And that basic, oh, excuse me. There we are. That makes, that makes you and your business who you are. It gives direction. 
So you always, when you have to make decisions about things that are happening or going to happen in your life or in your business, your values are like um, the guideposts that you use to hold every decision against. Is the decision that you are about to make in line with your core values, yes or no? If yes, it's easy, you go ahead. If no, you might still have to go ahead, but at least you will do it knowingly. You will know that you're doing something that is perhaps not exactly in line with your core values, but for some reason necessary. And when you say no, you at least know exactly why it is that you say no. The vision is clear. Everybody knows, everybody involves knows, involved, excuse me, knows um, what's important and what not. It is short. There, um, it's, it's like two or three sentences long. It's not an enormous paragraph and it's certainly not a book. Work, a book. Uh, and it doesn't have any fluff in there. It doesn't have any difficult words in there. Nobody has to go to a dictionary and look up what something means. The purpose that it provides explains why you exist, why it is that you do what you do. It's challenging. It's, it may even say, seem impossible. It is big, which is why it is challenging, but it's also inspiring. It is something that not just inspires you, but it inspires you the people you work with and it inspires your clients as well is one of the reasons why they want to work with you it's unique it, re it it reflects what is unique about you and it is um vivid it describes the future in such a way that why wouldn't you want that vision to become reality it's it's like um, Walt Disney's vision. I'll come back to that later. Walt Disney had the vision, um, I want to make everybody happy. Now, who doesn't want to be happy and who doesn't want to work for somebody who wants to make everybody happy? Now, what, what if your vision is not as clear as you would like? Or maybe you don't have a vision yet. How then do you... Um, establish what your vision is? How do you figure out what the vision is that you have for your life or for your business? Start by asking yourself a couple of questions. Start by asking, what are my core values? How do my core values tie into my business? How did I start my business? Why did I start my business? What was the idea behind it? What made me take action? Why is it that we're good at what we're doing? Um, why are we the way we are and who we are today? What do people say about us? What do our clients say about us? What, are, what do the people who work for you say about you? And ask the same questions of the people that you trust, the people that you work with, but that you trust and the people that will be critical Critical, but respectful, not people who will break you down and leave you shattered on the floor, but people who will who love you, who love your business, but are also honestly critical about your business. And when you've got the answers, see if you can create a vision statement. Why are you on this earth? Why does your business exist? Why do you do, do, you do the things you do? And when you've done that, when you've created a vision statement that is short and sweet, no longer than two or three sentences, and if you can make it shorter, that's perhaps even better, you might come up with something like, like I just said, Walt Disney, whose only, whose main reason for uh, being in business was to make people, people happy. And he could have chosen anything, but his choice was uh, cartoons, Disneyland, Disney World, and everything else that came out of that. But always with, in the back of his mind, I want to make people happy. 
is this wonderful South African company called Wonderbag that, I forgot how do I explain this. Um, a wonder bag is um, a bag in which you put a pot with hot food. You tie, you tie the bag close, you put a lid on the bag, and you put a lid on the pot and then a lid of the, of the bag on top of it. And without further electricity or other energy, the heat within the pot is maintained and you can cook without any external energy forces the food because the bag contains the warmth of the pot. The lady who founded this company, Sarah Collins, had, has the vision to improve the health and environment of, and lives of women and girls in low-income communities so they have a better chance at determining their own educational and financial futures. She could have come up with anything, but she came up with a wonder bag. I like this one because I'm not an athlete, but I have a body, and according to Nike, I am therefore an, uh, an athlete, to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. And Facebook, of course, the platform on which we are right now, to give people the power to build community and bring the world closer together. They could have chosen all kinds of things, but they created the social media platform. I want to leave you with um, these questions or with a couple of questions. What is your vision? What is your vision statement? What is the vision that you have for your life, your business or both? I'd love to hear it. I'd love to see it in the comment. Um, if you have one, leave it in the comment section below. If you have questions, don't hesitate to, um, to ask me leave a put your question in the comment section below or tag and tag me in it so i'll see it um send me a pm or an email you can find me on social media on these platforms and my email is up here so it's been let me stop this stop sharing there we go now i have to there we are. It's been a pleasure being here. I hope this was useful to you. Hi, Patrice. I only now see your comments. I'm sorry about that. So um, I hope this has been useful. And I look forward to seeing everybody in South Africa. Until then, and as always, go there greatly. Bye-bye.